Welcome to the Reality Revolution Podcast. I am your host, Brian Scott. This podcast is dedicated to the spirits who believe life is meant to be magical and fun. It contains advanced viewpoints for the multidimensional human beings of the 21st century. Here, we venture to share the mysteries of self and reality. Our primary purpose is to reawaken your sense of fascination and awe towards life, to shatter your rigid belief systems and ways of seeing the world. My goal is to hack your reality, to help you unleash potential and open unlimited possibilities of wealth, health, and relationships in your life, and to explore the mysteries of the universe. So let's talk about this. Today we're going to talk about pendulums. That's the topic that I want to talk about. What is a pendulum? In Reality Transurfing by Vadim Zeeland, one of the most interesting concepts that he talks about, which is not talked about enough in advanced law of attraction literature, literature that is really profound and effective, you see commentary about it by different people when they talk about the law of attraction or the idea that we can create our own reality. That is different than the idea of traveling through parallel realities. They are, they have some similarities to each other, and it's part of the reason why, to me, law of attraction works when you understand the quantum model of reality. But understanding that the law of attraction does work, like attracts like, the idea that on some level you are creating your reality through your thoughts. The one thing that always bothered me is we're not just talking about, well, if that's true then a group of people's thoughts would be much, much more powerful and much more difficult to maneuver through. And so even though we can create our realities by the habits we take, by our subconscious thoughts, by monitoring and changing our thoughts, we're still sucked into large groups of people that think in a certain way. And what happens, you get pulled into this group and it just, it makes scientific sense when you have more than one person and you are thinking about something then that the your thoughts together create greater power going back to napoleon hill's think and grow rich and the idea of the mastermind group and now you see this explosion of mastermind groups where people form groups to go over ideas i have several mastermind groups myself and considering creating another one the idea is when you get multiple people together discussing different topics and trying to solve problems. You end up solving them faster. You have greater creativity. There's a dark side to this, and that's the idea of the destructive pendulum. And it's something that you have to become aware of in this world if you want to manifest your ultimate dream or reality. And so I want to discuss this. I want to discuss my take on it and what pendulums and how I can maneuver through pendulums because honestly we we can't completely do it but let's talk about what pendulums are Zeeland explains that we are taught from childhood to obey the will of others to perform our duties serve our country our family the company we work for a political party the state or in many cases an idea to serve anyone except ourselves. And to varying degrees, everyone has a sense of duty, a responsibility, a necessity, and guilt with all of these things. Everyone is ready to serve a group or organization in one way or another, be it family, a club, a school, a company, a political party, the state, and so on. And all these structures emerge and develop when a separate group of people begin to think and act in the same way. This phenomenon probably exists from the very beginning of time. Then they're joined by others and this structure grows, gaining strength, forcing its members to follow the rules, and eventually amassing the potential to gain control over large groups of people sucking these people into this particular reality defined not by themselves but by someone else and on the material level the structure 
that we're talking about consists of a group of people, many times united by common goals, and then material objects take form. There's buildings, furniture, equipment, machinery, technology, all of it's a part of this pendulum. But on an energetic level, a structure begins to appear when people think in the same way, and as a result of which the parameters of their thought energy are identical, and their thought energy finally unites into a single current. Now, if you study ancient mythology, there's this idea of the egregore. The egregore is a magical creature that is created just purely through the power of a group thought. And if you watch the American Gods on stars or, or read the wonderful book by Neil Gaiman, which is fantastic, the idea is gods are created by our thought and that these gods exist in the world because we, have, we think about them. So imagine that idea. There's an idea that something can exist when a group of people start to think about it enough. We see it. We see it with political parties, we see it with our government, we see it with our city, we see it with our school that we're in, and the gangs, and the cliques, and the groups, and the and it's incredible when you go on Facebook, when you go on Twitter, when you look at groups that form just on any Reddit forum, the forum, the groups, the groups, everybody wants to form into these groups, which is how we are, it's who we are, but we don't become aware that by doing this and by giving in to these pendulums, we take away our power to shape and control our own reality. It's happened to me. And in some cases, it can be so vicious you can fall into a pendulum and lose your life. The state can take you. All kinds of things can happen. So this independent information structure is what an energy pendulum, and that's what Zealand is talking about. And it takes a life of its, lo- uh, uh, its own life and it subjugate to its own laws and the very people who create it. The structure begins to become almost like it has sentience. And so it wants to have more and more adherence. Feed it with energy, like a, almost like a vampire. The more powerful it grows. It doesn't care about you, it just wants your energy. Every pendulum has its own characteristic frequency. So there are some good pendulums and bad pendulums. And there's no way you can avoid being in these pendulums. Understanding that you awaken to the fact that these pendulums are controlling you is probably the most important part of this. For example, if when he's talking about a frequency of the pendulum, Zeeland gives an example. If you want to get a swing moving, you have to push it to a certain rhythm or frequency. This is called a resonant frequency. If the number of adherents decreases, the force of its swing is weakened. And if it all loses its adherence, the pendulum will stop moving completely, thereby ceases to exist as a separate identity. Examples that he gives of defunct pendulums are ancient pagan religion, stone tools, ancient weapons, outdated trends of fashion, and vinyl records, which still is a pendulum. I have many of them in my house. But he does say that you can be surprised in the number of things that actually list and qualify as a pendulum. And once I read this book and I started to really analyze it, first of all, I had a little bit of shame because I was pulled into all kinds of pendulums. Of course, we just went through a political election, which was very divisive for this country. And it was its own pendulum. And the the thing that Zealand's arguing is that it doesn't matter if you're for or against. If you get up and say how, you know, whatever you want to say, how dare you, or you are great, whatever side of the argument you take, you're feeding it energy. And the pendulum doesn't care if you like it or hate it, but by just contributing to it, you feed it energy. Any structure whose particular features were created by collective thought energy represents a pendulum, according to Zealand. And generally speaking, all living beings capable of rating energy at a particular vibration will sooner or later form an energy pendulum. There's lots of examples of pendulums in nature, such as, like, uh, he gives bacterial colonies, 
populations of living creatures, schools of fish, herds of animals, forests, prairies, ant hills. Essentially, all are organized homogeneous structures made up of living organisms. Those can all be pendulums. Every living organism, not just humans, represents a single unit of energy and so can be considered as an elementary pendulum. So the word pendulum is the word that Zeeland's using, but he's really referring to, it can be a group, it can be a movement of energy, as far as you can tell, but it's coming from living creatures. The group pendulum exists as an independent entity and sets rules for its adherents to follow, partly to keep them together, but also to, to attract new ones. This type of entity is independent in the sense that it develops according to its own laws. Its adherents are unaware of the fact they're acting in accordance with the laws of the pendulum and not of their own will. For example, a bureaucratic apparatus develops as an independent structure irresponsive of the will of its individual officials. Of course, an influential official is free to make their own decisions, but only to the extent that they do not contradict the laws of the system. So the purpose of the pendulum is not only to get energy from its adherents, whether it is their personal benefit or not. When a person comes under the influence of a system, they are focused to build their lives in accordance with its laws. Otherwise, the system will chew them up and spit them out. Once under the influence of a destructive pendulum, you can easily end up ruining your entire life. And as a rule, it is difficult to break free without suffering losses. If a person is lucky, they find their place within the system and feel home there. Of course, there's always people that find a way to, into the system. The adherent gives their energy to the pendulum, which in return provides the individual with an environment. If a follower rebels against the laws of the structure of the frequency, their thought energy ceases to be in harmony with the resonance frequency of the pendulum being deprived of the essential energy. The pendulum either drives the maverick adherent out of the system or destroys them. If, however, a person has ended up a long way away from a lifeline favorable to their growth, life inside the structure of an alien pendulum can be soulless as hard labor or just turn into a very sad existence. In this case, the pendulum is purely destructive to the adherent, whether they like it or not. The person who falls under a pendulum's influence loses their freedom, being forced to live by imposed laws and becoming a small cog in a big machine. That said, an individual can find themselves under protectorship of a pendulum and achieve outstanding results. The examples that Zeeland gives, Napoleon, Hitler, Stalin, I'm sure that they all lived great lives because they were being protected by the pendulum and being used. This does not mean the pendulum was actually concerned for their personal well-being and exploited them to its own ends. When you look at the Nuremberg rallies, for Germany they're they're scary and the entire soul of the beautiful country of Germany you can feel their sadness with it and the thing is they got caught up into these pendulums and the energy pulled people along on this incredibly destructive path The pendulum uses sophisticated methods to lure new adherents. You fly to it like moths to a flame. How often people are perceived by pendulums advertising tricks and move far away from a potential happiness that was so close, young men leave for the army and lose their lives. And I'm not saying it's bad to join any army. And we can get into that later. As long as you're not giving your thought energy to this thought structure and you become awakened to it. Students go to university learning in vain to master a profession that is not really for them. You read about the news, people spending millions of dollars to get their kids into a college so they can get them into a certain pendulum. The pendulum can hide its motives behind very well-meaning masks, and yet its activities can ruin the lives of its adherents. The greatest threat that the pendulum poses to the individual is that it leads its victims away from other lifelines where they would be able to find happiness. Those are the destructive features of a pendulum. And so we know it's 
striving to attract as many followers as possible, to source as much energy as possible. And you can see examples of that all around. You see like examples of that with gangs that form in inner cities. You see examples of that with gangs that form in other countries or gangs in all cities. You see the power of these pendulums, groups of people form. So what do we do? How do we, how do we maneuver through this? We have to understand more of how a pendulum works. A pendulum acts aggressively towards anyone who refuses to follow it, attempting to win them over, neutralize their position, or get rid of them. A pendulum hides behind masks and lofty ideas, and it plays on people's feelings to justify its actions and attract as many adherents as possible. Essentially, the pendulum is what I was saying before, this thought monster, like the old mythic creature, the egregore. And it plays more of a feature in your lives than, than you might think. He gives, Zealand gives an example in the book of somebody playing a soccer game and he misses the goal and everybody throws all of their feelings of anger at the player, ready to tear him into pieces. And it reminded me when I was at a Bronco game in the playoffs playing the Ravens and, and Flacco threw this beautiful ball and beat the Broncos. It was very tough. I was there. But the anger that we had or that we all threw uh, unleashed on the poor safety that failed to deflect the ball for the Broncos because this was at, in, the, in the Denver Stadium. Where did that energy go? That was this massive negative energy. So the pendulum is part of the system of energy. You would think that from such an attack of negative emotion, the player would die on the spot, but he remains alive and well. Probably a little bit crushed and sad, guilty. This is because the negative energy directed towards the player is absorbed by the pendulum. It comes back to you. It comes back to all of the people putting it out. If that weren't the case, the individual would, would explode or become the auto of subtape that he would, you know, he would float above the ground. So I'm no judge of whether a pendulum is an animate energy or a simply an energy form. And I don't believe that Zealand is saying that either. Uh, either way does not affect what, we're, what I'm trying to say. The most important thing is to, to recognize that a pendulum, to, to recognize when a pendulum is affecting you. And to avoid being drawn into its game, unless you stand to benefit. And there are lots of situations where you can see the wave of fortune take over and you can move into positive pendulums. And I believe that we can create positive pendulums. Now that we understand its power, we can create a pendulum that can work against other pendulums. Pendulum has one goal is to attract as many supporters as possible to source its energy. That's what we know. If we can create the energy of love and happiness, why not? If we understand the power of the pendulum. These groups are destructive to the individual. Because whatever way they look at it, they will still feed on a person's energy with no concern for that individual's happiness or well-being. That's why you see corporations and organizations like these call for compassion to others yet remain indifferent to their own employees. If a person feels comfortable and genuinely happy working for such an organization, and there's some great ones out there, then they have probably found their vocation and the pendulum is a place for them to be. However, it's also important to be honest with yourself and ask yourself whether you're not perhaps wearing the mask of the benefactor. Are you donating your energy and money for the good of others with true sincerity or is being involved in some charity just an attempt to feel better, like a better person or look good? Destructive pendulums have trained people out of choosing their own destiny 
Because if individuals retain enough independence to have freedom to choose, it will be much harder for the pendulum to attract so many followers. So that the pendulums don't want you to have freedom. Our mind is so used to the idea that our fate is our lot in life, that we have to accept whatever fate falls before us, that we find it difficult to believe that we can simply choose a destiny that is more our liking. It is an it is advantageous for pendulums to keep their adherents under control so they invent all sorts of ways to manipulate them the f- here's s- some examples that that zealand gives transferring um could become a pendulum but transferring itself the idea of transferring itself uh, could become a pendulum that any idea could become a pendulum But the examples that I can think of for pendulums are just numerous and you see them every day. And as I mentioned in this podcast, now that I've kind of given you an idea of it, start to notice the pendulums in your life. And how are those pendulums affecting you? I notice I have a Facebook pendulum for sure that I pull myself into. And I have an Instagram pendulum. And so I think that social media itself is a pendulum. The internet is a pendulum. So if I find myself not wanting to pull myself into certain discussions and certain things the internet is a gigantic uh, what would we call it a marketplace for pendulums of the of your own choice all around you That is one reason why the void meditation is so powerful when you go to the void you can connect to the source and perhaps the idea that the, all of these thought streams trying to pull you in one direction or another is why it's so difficult for many people to see the benefits of the law of attraction and why so many people truly feel helpless like they cannot control their environment they not they that the power of their minds to create reality doesn't exist and so it's it's easy for uh, for me to see that people don't want to have this negativity but you get what you do not want a lot of times with the pendulum and a pendulum can be powered both by its supporters and its opponents the idea of simply giving your your energy to it so it's tough we don't want to live a boring life where we don't care we just need to wake up we need to wake up to the fact that these things are influencing us everyone is confronted with negative information or challenging events and sometimes these things are simply pendulums pulling us in one direction or another sometimes bad news and unfortunate events are provocation on the part of the pendulum people do not want to have this negativity in their lives and generally speaking they always respond in one of two ways if the information that they receive is not too hurtful they let it go and it's quickly forgotten If the provocative information is annoying or frightening, it touches a chord in the person's soul, then their mental energy is captured in the pendulum's loop, and the person is attuned to the resonance frequency. Events begin to unfold fairly predictably. So the idea is recognizing these particular pendulums can be frightening. So if if you're getting bad news and it's coming from the government, if a certain politician is being very fearful and creating events suddenly happening and saying how terrible they are we have to ask ourselves are we being pulled into a pendulum keep ourselves awakened for example and i'm not saying that in in a political sense but we for example can let information about accidents and disasters pass us by if we're not directly affected why upset ourselves unnecessarily as a rule when you hear the news a disaster or taking place or something somewhere in the world but you're on a lifeline where you play the role of a witness rather than the victim the line which you are the victim is somewhere further away conversely if you allow yourself to take on board information about disasters and misfortunes and murders and discuss it with friends it's quite possible you'll soon shift to a lifeline where you'll see you may well end up as a role of the victim or you may see more of it around you in your life And so the stronger you desire to avoid something the more likely it is you'll encounter it to actively fight against what you do not want in your life is to make sh- 
every effort to ensure that it's present in your life. You do not have to take any specific action to shift onto an undesired lifeline. It is enough to think negative thoughts and then fertilize them with emotion. And when you do not want there to be bad weather, you think about how much you dislike rain. Noisy neighbors wear you down and you end up arguing with them all the time or silently hating them. You're afraid of something and the fact greatly concerns you or you've had enough of your present job and you save your You savor your dislike for it, and your dislike becomes an emotion that you're used to. Everywhere you are pursued by exactly the very thing that you do not want, that you fear, hate, or despise. There may be other things that you would also like to avoid, but because you're not investing in any negative emotions into them, they do not appear in your life. The idea is your reaction to the information. Once you let the thing that you do not want in your life associate feelings of hostility with it and indulge in those feelings it will instantly become a physical reality within your life layer the only way to eliminate the things that you do not want from your life is to break free from the influence of the pendulum that has seized your thought energy and from then on avoid responding to its provocation or getting pulled into its game you can free yourself from the pendulum's influence in two ways by defeating it or by stopping its sway you will look more closely at how we can do that. And and I will try to discuss some different ways that I think that we can defeat the pendulum. But this gives us a general idea of what Zealand is talking about with pendulums. And it's very powerful. And I can tell you from experience where I've coached people, eight times out of ten, if they're doing the right things, there's some kind of pendulum that is affecting their thinking and sometimes if you break down your own beliefs your beliefs are being diminished by these pendulums they're telling you that you're not good enough you're not strong enough that you can't do that thing that you shouldn't do that thing that you aren't going to do that thing that it doesn't look right that you're going to be looked down upon that it's not the right thing to do that you should never have done it anyway that it's shameful that you did it when all of these things are thoughts from the pendulum to keep you with the pendulum you are your own self and you can choose what you want in this life when you come to realization of the power that you have then you can reduce the importance of these pendulums i would love to get your examples of pendulums that have affected you please come to my facebook group reality revolution i'd love to get some examples and i would love to talk about how you maybe avoided these pendulums i think one of the great things about transurfing that we can we can at least do is that we can create case studies of pendulums because what this book really does with reality transurfing is it gives us an idea of the pendulum and some examples on how to break it but now that we know about these and we can attribute it to what our overall philosophy of mind manifestation works then we can start to come up with some case studies they don't have to necessarily be predictive of where we have overcome pendulums ourselves and in an attempt to avoid getting political i can only say that i have chosen not to post political things and to avoid reading political news and i've decided that i will not support any candidate until close to the very end i believe i can make my decision very quickly with within a within a week or so if you read tim ferris's 4 hour work week he does he believes the same thing a couple days before the election he'll actually look into who he wants to vote for he'll talk to his good close friends he'll read a little bit and he can make his decision we don't need to be pulled into a political cycle and if you see In my experience if I see somebody that makes a ridiculous comment online and my first response is to just say no you're wrong I'm being pulled into that pendulum and I am a victim of the pendulum and I'm still surviving from the scars of the pendulums that I got sucked into and my Facebook friends can tell you that I certainly was too political and the worst thing that i can 
that I think that if you if you have anything to say politically, it's not going to change anybody's mind, especially on Facebook. People already have made up their minds. If for some reason you think that your voice being out there works, then I think that you should look for the way that your voice works in in the positive way. But wrench yourself out to the situation. Don't pull your thoughts to it so that it can affect your life. Because you're living this life, not some politician's life, not somebody else's life. You're living your life every day when you wake up. And so if you let the pendulums affect you, if you let this group over here that tells you that this is what you should be doing, and this group over here saying that you're just not good enough, and this group over here that says that you're not pretty enough, and this group over here that says that you never didn't, that you're never going to make it that way. All of these pendulums are defeating you. And now I say we rise up and overcome these pendulums. But I would love to hear your stories of pendulums that you have dealt with. Trying to battle with the pendulum is futile, according to Zealand. So for me to tell you that we can we can overcome all these pendulums, in many ways it's futile if you understand that going into it. When you battle with the pendulum, you just end up supplying it energy. That's the point. It's like the Chinese finger toy. The more you battle with it, the harder it is to remove. The first and most important condition for successfully defeating a pendulum, according to Zealand, is to refuse to get into conflict with it. Firstly, the more actively you try to fight off pendulums is that you get down, the more they will pressure you. You can re- endlessly leave me alone get away from me and think you're fighting them off but actually you're just providing them with energy making them cling to you even more secondly you do not have the right to judge or change anything everything you see and experience should be accepted as if there were paintings on display whether you like them or not so what I'm calling out my friends that are obsessed with po- politics and I understand I understand the horrors and and the joy that you may have. I have friends on both sides of the political spectrum. And there's good people that know that know how to love, that mean well, that have been misled, that do not understand, that have been pulled into vicious pendulums that deny them the ability to truly understand what's going on. I'm saying you can't don't have to be pulled into that either i'm saying to let it go to open up to oneness to open up to the universe in a different way i think we can do this so you don't need to battle with it all right everything you see and experience should be accepted as if you're there paintings on display whether you like them or not There may be many paintings in an exhibition that are not to your taste, but it would never occur to you to demand they be removed from the exhibition room. So once you've recognized the pendulum's right to exist, you have the right to leave it behind, remaining free of its influence. The main thing is not to fight it, judge it, get angry, or lose your self-control, because by doing so you agree to play the game. The pendulum should be calmly taken for granted as a necessary evil and left at that. Any position of opposition supplies the pendulum with energy. Before you can fully understand what it means to choose, you have to know how to decline. Most people have a vague idea of what they do, not, what they do want but know exactly what they do not want. And I find that the most when when I'm trying to understand somebody's true purpose, it's easier to find out at at the beginning what somebody doesn't want to have happen. In an effort to get rid of things or events they do not want in their life, people act in a manner that has the opposite effect. To decline something you have to first accept its existence. The word accept is the context does not mean to embrace something and let it into your personal space it means simply to recognize its right to existence and then pass indifferently to accept and let go of something means to consider the meaning of something and let it pass waving goodbye as it leaves this is much more effective than letting something into you into your personal space becoming attached to something and then trying to oppose it 
When you think about the things that you do not want, you attract them further into your life. Imagine a person who has apples. Rather than simply paying them no attention, it irritates the person that apples exist. On a material level, they get annoyed every time they see an apple and openly express their disgust. On an energetic level, the energy of that disgust is expressed when they see the apple. The body doesn't know sometimes the difference between the energetic level of the disgust or, or, or joy because some of the same chemicals are produced. So on an energetic level, the person may well be hungrily pouncing on apples, stuffing their mouths, chomping loudly, screaming about how much they hate apples, stuffing apples, stuffing their pockets only to be sick once again, complain how much they cannot stomach apples, and suddenly they see apples everywhere. What the person does not realize is that you could simply delete apples from the experience of life. It does not matter whether you love or hate. If your thoughts are latched onto the object of your emotions, your thought energy will be attuned to a certain, certain frequency, and you will end up caught by a pendulum and transferred to a corresponding lifeline or reality where the object of your fixation is present in abundance. So if you want to get moved into some parallel reality where there's a lot of apples, and if you hate apples, then start to detest them. It's tough. It's an easy response to be angry and detested and disgusted by some things because in this world, there's some things that are so disgusting that you cannot stop thinking about them and they literally pull your mind away. This is a mental process that can transform your life to escape from the pendulum. You know what's right and wrong. You know the choices that you need to make. Do you need to suck, be sucked into some of these pendulum? Do you, do you really need to be sucked into some of these pendulums? Is it important for you to go on, make that political argument? If you want to eradicate something from your life, all you have to do is stop thinking about it. This can be hard. There are, there are things that are tough for me to stop thinking about. I am definitely sucked into the Marvel pendulum. My pendulum is I will watch every Marvel movie the day it comes out. I've read millions of Marvel comics and I know everything about the universe of Marvel. And so, yes, this is a pendulum in my life. Fortunately, it is not a destructive pendulum and I accept it completely. So, that is an example of a good pendulum. But, if you want to eradicate something in your life, you have to stop thinking about it. Pass it by with indifference. That's if you want to eradicate, and it will disappear. To eliminate something from your life, ignore it. Do not avoid it. There's a difference. When you avoid something, it means you have to let it into your personal space. Are now actively trying to get rid of it. To ignore something means not to react to it, and consequently not to experience its presence in, in your space. Imagine that you're a radio and if your day-to-day -day life is like waking up every day listening to a radio program that you hate, all you have to do is tune into a different frequency. You might think that you can protect yourself from unwanted pendulums by putting up iron boundaries between yourself and the world, but this is an illusion. Putting on protective armor is like saying, I'm a blank wall. I see nothing. I hear nothing. I do not know anything. I want to talk to anyone. I am unavailable. It requires a huge amount of energy to do that as well. A person who deliberately isolates themselves from the world will find themselves in a constant state of tension. I just read a devastating article about the people in Japan and Hong Kong right now that literally stay in their homes and are incapable of leaving. And the amount of energy that would, that would take, and it saddened me, so we're not talking about becoming hermits. When you ignore the pendulum, its energy will pass you by, dissipating into space without causing you any harm. Pen the pendulum cannot push your buttons or upset you if you're empty in relationships to it. The pendulum's principal objective is to attract as many of adherents as possible and reap their energy. So as a basic example of this, would be like a dog that starts following you and barking loudly. Now, if you turn around to face the dog, it will bark even louder. And yet, if you take it seriously and start to try and dodge or fight it, the dog will follow you for a long time, but just because it wants someone to lock horns with. Now, if you ignore the dog from the outset, it will simply switch its attention to the next person that comes along that they can bark at. The dog is too absorbed in its goal of sourcing energy to think of anything else. The dog is the metaphor for this. 
so you understand that by facing down the dog and barking at it and it barks back at you there's things in your life that make you angry there's things on tv that make you angry if you're going to bark at it you're going to get barked back stop giving away your energy means to stop thinking about them altogether to erase from your mind when you can say to yourself you're not worth it and really mean that the per- the person or thing will disappear from your life we often come come across situations however where it is not that easy to ignore the pendulum we have bosses that we work with that we can't necessarily leave immediately or family members if your boss demands something from you an outright refusal or open defense of yourself would, would entail a, a loss of energy So you can however act as if you were willing to play the pendulum's game as long as you remain aware of the fact inside that you're just pretending. Stopping a pendulum there are situations where the pendulum cannot be defeated which means it cannot be ignored or escaped. Zeeland talks about a friend once who was a really nice kind-hearted guy who who was incredibly strong and a bunch of people came up to him and they were trying to look cause trouble and he was able to fight them back and that was able to stop the pendulum but that was an unusual circumstance because most people are not able to defeat three people that come after them but the habit of negatively reacting to unpleasant circumstances triggers the pendulum's mechanism for capturing thought energy now that's an important sentence that zelan is talking about he's giving the specifics of how energy is pulled in by the men so it's your reaction this habit will fade if you decide to play your own game in which you deliberately substitute negative emotion with positive emotion confidence for fear enthusiasm for gloom indifference for resentment joy for irritation try reacting inappropriately to small nuisances you have nothing to lose it might seem a silly game to play but the pendulum you will have no chance the game style only seems silly because pendulums have trained us to exclusively play the games that are to benefit them you can experiment with forcing pendulums to play your game you will enjoy it and it will be just surprised to discover what a powerful technique it is the working principle is this when you radiate thought energy at a different frequency to the pendulum's resonance frequency you're in a dissonance with the pendulum the dissonance stills the pendulum's sway in relationship to your personal energy the result being that the pendulum leaves you in peace There's another interesting method that Zeeland mentions. If something is causing you a problem and and you're trying to work it out and it could be health, confidence or peace of mind, it's bother, bothering you. If you think that these are three things would There are three things that we all need to be filled. Ask yourself what the person you are finding so challenging might really need at that moment. For example, you know, they If your boss shouts at you, maybe you're tired or having problems at the home and what they really need is a little peace of mind. So trying to figure out what their problem is and giving that can divert their energy. So you give them conscious confidence. Imagine in your mind with your own thought energy something positive for them. And so they leave the scene and the vibration changes. He also gives another example of giving a tiny piece of your own energy to avoid joining it. Sometimes you just by simply acknowledging someone you can get out of the energy. The technique is based on the principle. So you give the pendulum your energy but only a tiny piece of it in comparison to the amount of energy you could have lost had you been drawn into the pendulum. And the person that you give the energy to will be a little bit friendlier and it'll be easier to divert away from the pendulum. I'm sure we could talk about some examples of that. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that. Just the idea is these pendulums focus our thinking and narrow our information, our access to the alternate space and the information field. It we, it's like a narrow corridor. We can't see the big picture of what's really going on. Keep whatever your problem you're dealing with in perspective and remain aware of the pendulum's intent to trick you into playing its game. Wrench yourself out, be detached. That's the the ba- basic thing. So you want to avoid going into a suspended state. He uses the term suspended state when there's you're outside of the influence of the pendulums, then it's also a bad thing. So the the opposite of the pendulum 
is discussed as the wave of fortune. And that's just by making the choice of the things that you want in life. We can talk more about the wave of fortune. But it, it, he says that in, in the alternate space, they're, they're favorable to us. That it's a cascade of pleasant, pleasant events. May not always follow the first, but the sign of good fortune please you and lift your spirits. And the cascade of seem definitely follow the wheel of fortune and bluebird of happiness are not simply abstract metaphors. The wave of fortune is really a set of lifelines that are auspicious for you personally. And it's located in the alternate space. It contains everything, including lines like golden vase that run through the information field. If you can find access to the source and you find the outer line of the golden vein and catch on to the piece of good luck, you can slide by inertia onto the other lifelines where events of a similar nature are accumulated and a new set of fortuitous circumstances await you. That is the wave of fortune. It will carry you into a happy lifeline. And if we follow pendulums that carry us into these wave of fortune, keeping our minds positive with the right kind of thoughts, the wave of fortune touches your life in the form of good news. It brings you into other lifelines. The task is to grab the rope and pull yourself onto that line and the information that you're getting it from. By pulling yourself onto that lifeline. That is the metaphor that Zealand gives. Sometimes the wave will pass you by, but the wave doesn't pass you by. It is always there. So people are inclined to believe that it's hard to catch. You do not have to make a huge effort to saddle a wave of good luck. It is a question of choice. If you accept the wave of fortune into your life, it will stay with you. If you follow, if you allow yourself to be influenced by a destructive pendulum and become immersed in the negative energy, you will be distanced from the wave of good fortune. This is heady stuff and I don't want to bore you. I find this very fascinating. And I'm still coming to grips with it. I have read this book dozens of times and listened to it, and thought about it. And the two things that are very unique are the concepts of importance and the concept of pendulums. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are on it. These are the things that Zealand talks about. So be aware of these thought patterns and you will have greater power over your reality. And you can help join the reality revolution today. Ride that wave of fortune into the reality revolution with me. Please email me at brian at advancedsuccessinstitute.com. It is truly a pleasure that you spent all this time with me listening on this topic. I am cannot tell you how grateful I am. Please reach out. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any topics that you want me to talk about, please let me know. I'm open to talking about any of this stuff. I want to go deep on these topics and we can explore them together. Contact me if you'd like me to create a guided meditation that's particular to whatever situation that you have. And I would love to try to do that for you. I really want to help you out. And I hope these things help you find greater wealth, health and relationships in your life. And can't wait to talk about this stuff some more. And I really appreciate the time that you spent with me. Thank you.